Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? Hope everybody's having a great day today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how I became a senior full stack engineer. Now, I've been in the field for over 11 plus years, and it took a while to get to a not even a software engineering position, but then also like that title senior, just because I really wasn't doing things correctly. And that was an eye opener. Like I was just working on bugs, getting things done and not really looking at the bigger picture. And that's something that as you get older, your career perspectives change. You want to actually like do more in your career as opposed to just being a developer behind the screen, working on mundane tasks and just doing the same thing every single day. And then after a while, I, I was just getting tired of it. So I wanted to figure out a way to make not only be more productive, but actually be valuable to a team. The first thing that I did do just to get the ball rolling on this is just change my mindset. Changing your mindset to introduce new habits to where you're actually getting things done more effectively. You're not spending too much time writing code and going down a rabbit hole of introducing new bugs into the work that you're doing. Just really trying to hone and understand what the end goal is. When I got like certain tasks to work on, if it was way out of my league, I would wait till the very last minute or towards the end to work on that. I will always pick up on the easy tasks and I would get like a dopamine hit every single time, like having these small little wins or working on these easy problems that made me, you know, love to code. And after a while, I realized like, that's not the path forward. Like. The, the only way to get better is not doing the easy things. You got to do the hard things. What I mean by that is if you're introduced with a task that is full stack, right? So you have to work on the back end, the front end, and you have to introduce new APIs, all that. This is something that you would have to look at from a bigger picture. So for me, I would look at the hardest task in that list. So the back end will be the hardest thing. And then work towards understanding the requirements. And if it's something that I don't know in the requirements, just ask questions, like reach out to product, ask them like, hey, like, what do you mean by this? Um, is there an easier way to go about getting the data or like mocking it the way that you guys want it? You know, asking these questions will give you a better perspective in terms of what you can do and what you should do. Because a lot of times is, you know, whatever you're looking at, the, the requirements and everything is set of stone product went through it and it's been signed off. You work through it and then you realize in the middle of the project, that's not what you should have done. And I've made that mistake so many freaking times. And the, the biggest thing was just realizing like, OK, in order for me to save more time, I need to ask more questions up front before I start any work so that everybody's on the same page. So that's when you deal with like tech planning. So product will go about tech planning the the work and then the the developer will look at look into it look at the requirements and then start working on it i like to look at the requirements and just be like hey like is this accurate what else do we need here are there any edge cases like really think outside the box so that i could take care of all these little things that weren't documented so i don't have to deal with scope creep which is basically like once you're working on something, then there's like a critical piece of the project that wasn't documented. Now that needs to be a requirement for the work that you're doing and it extends the life of the project. You know, this is why I advocate on the channel, always ask questions. Changing my mindset to just be like, you know what, take on any challenges. It doesn't matter how big or small, just take on any challenge, look at the challenge from a bigger picture, then break down the hardest task for that challenge into smaller pieces and start making actionable steps to getting things done, okay? So if you do that, you're gonna notice that you're gonna be more productive, you're gonna learn a lot faster, and you're gonna clear up a lot of your time just doing mundane stuff. The second thing that I did was, like I said, embrace the challenge. You've got to do that. Work as hard as you can on those challenges. Don't shy away from them. If there's a challenge that is brought to your attention that you need to work on, do it. Don't wait to the last minute. If you wait to the last minute, it's going to suck in the end. 
Because doing the easy things, you're going to be happy about it. But then once it comes to that hard thing, you're going to be like, yo, now I got to do all this stuff. As you start to build these habits to do the hard things is going to become second nature to you. That's the first thing that you're always going to pick up. And every single challenge that you get, you're not going to be faced by it. All that imposter syndrome that you're feeling, trust me, you're not going to feel that after doing this, because that that has built my confidence as a programmer so much that any challenge that I get, I'm like, yo, like I could do this easily, easily is no matter what it is. I could do it. The third thing is trying new standards. So if you, everybody has their way of coding things, but you know, learning from others is the key here. You have to let go of that ego and learn from other developers that might know more than you or have a particular skill set that you don't have yet. So being a master of the game, learning as much as you can from other people, because it's not just you. If you set yourself on an island by yourself and just coding and all that stuff, yes, you could be a, a good programmer if you're really keen on programming, but it's all about collaborating with others. If someone is writing code better than you, learn from what they're doing. If they're writing it to where you could read everything easily, you understand the functionality and the workflow of what they're doing, you should do that. Just look into the, the habits that you're doing now as a programmer. If you're not modular, if it's not using dry, also KISS, keep it simple, stupid, to where it's super simple to read, easy enough to understand what's going on, then you need to make some changes. That's one of the things I did to become senior is just, you know, having an open mind and learning from other people and not being like, oh, it's every man from themselves. It's not like, it's not like that. You know, you're gonna be learning from other people, especially in this field. So you have to get comfortable with that idea. If you don't, you're gonna be stuck doing the same thing over and over again and being miserable all right so try new standards try new things take risks don't fall trap into just you know following the plan the more you learn the more valuable you will be and the easier it will be for you to transition from junior to senior mid tech lead whatever position that you're trying to go for you should be able to do it just by doing those actionable steps number four is like i said before being uncomfortable the more uncomfortable that you are the more opportunities will fall into your lap. The reason why I say this is because if you're doing the easy things all the time and then you're tasked with doing a, a, something hard, like doing presentations, um, actually pr providing a solution to a problem and you're not confident, you have to get comfortable with articulating your thoughts and understanding what a solution to a problem is. You know, just not throwing out a bunch of words to people and then, you know, Annoying people at the end of the day. If there's something that is broken and you know your manager needs help, be the first one to raise your hand, look into the problem, even if you don't know the answer. Start doing the research. Start gathering basic information to lead you down to other to another path to where you could come back into the middle with all this facts and then start executing. Start start doing. You know, that's that's the biggest lesson that I learned is that. You know, don't wait for other people to, you know, give you a handout. Like if there's something that you want, you have to reach out and get that opportunity. You know, no one's coming to save you. And then the last thing that I really want to talk to you guys about is this learning the system. Learn your tech stack. If there is a new language that's introduced to you on the team, learn it. If there is a person that knows more about that language, reach out to them and ask them questions on how to implement. Usually they would do a lunch and learn where like it's for an hour, they go through the new language, what problem does it solve, the, the basic format for it, documents, resources, like just to kind of get your feet wet, right? And it's good that you have that documentation of like from start to finish, like what's more important, and then you could branch off and do other things. But at least learning the tech stack and understanding systems will make you more valuable. If there is a particular area of the project that you're working on that you are an expert at and you know the ins and outs of it, you created the documentation, you're mentoring people and teaching people how to use that particular feature, you're valuable. You are valuable. If you can't even do that, what are you doing? Why are you even coding? The thing is, is that you know, with systems, understanding a system, the database structure, the, the backend structure, 
how everything is wired up. You understand that and just keep iterating and building on it and then seeing like little pain points that could be a, a potential risk to the project or just annoying in itself and you're able to solve that. You not only are you you teaching others on your team that, you know, what to look out for and a new way of doing things, but you're also building up your knowledge base. You're building up your skill set. I am always open to learning a new language or a new way of doing something. Whenever I work with like a junior developer or a new developer that has a completely different skill set than me, and they explain like, oh, I found this pain point and this is how I think we should go about it. And this will solve a lot of issues for us down the down the road. I'm sitting there like just ingesting that information because at the end of the day, we're all working together towards one goal. And that one goal is to become better programmers, to build something that is valuable to others. The biggest takeaway here is your knowledge, is this right here. The more you improve this, the more opportunities you will have. The more you shy away from these opportunities, the more you sit here and just be be on your own island. OK, I'm just going to code. I'm just going to do the easy things. Oh, I don't want to do that hard thing. I, I don't care. I don't care. I'll let I'll let the other the other developer that's hungrier than me do it. If that's what you want to do, fine. You're just going to stay the same all the time. And then, you know, long before you know it, they might not even need you anymore. So keep that in mind. Be valuable. Those opportunities will show up. And the more you know, the more you mentor other people, the easier it will be to become senior. I stopped getting in my own way. That's the biggest thing. And understanding and reflecting on the thing, on the areas that I needed to improve on and get the right information to advance in my career. And really letting go of all the old stuff and starting fresh. All right, so that's it, guys. That's the video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you're striving to become a senior developer and whether these actionable steps are going to help you get to that goal. All right. And if you need anything, you need a mentor, you need to ask me any questions about programming, you need me to look at your projects, your resume, hit me up, bro. Hit me up at the full stack, bro, at gmail.com. Hit me up. I just want to help you guys thrive in the tech space and actually look out for certain things that I ran into so that you don't have to deal with it. All right. So we'll talk soon.